Title, you know why we're here. We're making beer, brewskis, brew dogs, cerveza, suds, social sparklers, barrage water, silly juice, liquid chill vibes, attitude adjusters, mommy's little helper, daddy's little helper, hanging 20 with Spuds McKenzie, the stuff that made Elvis, the stuff that killed Elvis, grandpa's cough medicine, grandma's cough medicine, Bronson's, road sodas, bruchachos, crispy boys. Did I name them all? No matter what, we were all on the same page and today we are making it. There is a lot going on today and this is way more more than just a grain to glass video. We're trying a new hop, Frank Zappa hop. We are doing a Mexican lager. Okay, so we're gonna do two of the exact same batches. Same recipe, same system, same yeast, same grain, same hops, same water, same fermentation chamber. Everything is gonna be the exact same except one thing. One is going to be fermented under pressure and one is not gonna be fermented under pressure. We know that lagering at room temperature under pressure still makes great beer, but do we even have to ferment lagers under pressure? I'm just gonna ferment them both at 65 degrees and we're gonna do a blind taste contest at the end. Stick around for that. And I'll make you a deal. If you go to my merch store right now and buy a t-shirt, I swear on my life, I will go to the bar and spend $80 tonight. We had a really hard time finding the Zappa hop. None of our homebrew stores had it. So huge shout out to Northern Brewer for coming through for us for this video. We've been talking about this video for a long time. Northern Brewer always has the best inventory with great promotions going on. And if you go to Northern Brewer and type in promo code H4L, they'll charge you triple. Big shout out to Northern Brewer for always having everything. Thank you so much. Now let's get into this video. Let's start talking about this recipe. It's gonna be a good day. I just picked up a bunch of corny cakes today. I don't know where all my corny cakes go. I give them out. I don't get them back. But in all fairness, Half the stuff in my garage probably isn't even mine, so that's just how brewing with friends works. But let's get into it. Sit back, chill out, take your shirt off, crack a beer, and send us pictures of what you look like without a t-shirt on. Vlog City, baby. New vibe inspired by Brian from Elementary Brew Co. We're doing the vlog style today, so. Step aside, Casey, nice dap. I don't really use beer software as much as I should anymore. I'm not really trying to hone in recipes. I just kinda, I just kinda play it through my head. Here's how we're doing it today. I only use distilled water from here on out, and I just bought up pretty much everything they had at the grocery store up the street. I don't have any bath salts. I don't have any beer salts. I don't have any beer salts today. Not a big deal for this style of beer if you're using distilled water. Um, but the show's gotta go on because sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Speaking of which, can we get some cookie crumbles? If you do have beer chalk, hit it with maybe a gram at your strike, but if not, I'm not too worried about it. So you shouldn't be either. Okay, for the grain, we're gonna do 50-50, pretty much four and a half pounds of each, German Pilsner and North Star Pilsner. I've never brewed with North Star Pilsner before, so I'm interested in this. We're gonna mix it all together. I mill two times for every single batch. And you grab a handful or two of rice holes, Mix it all in there. I'm trying to make a good habit of brewing with rice holes for every single batch. And this is an advantage home brewers have over commercial brewers. Now as far as the yeast goes, this is the only second time I've brewed with this. It's White Labs, so you know you can't go wrong. It's withstood the test of time. It's not new. There's a ton of commercial breweries in San Diego that use this strain for their light beers. So let's rock and roll. This yeast strain is from Mexico. White Labs says to ferment it at 50 to 55 on their website but that's not what we're gonna do because that's not what this video is about. This is more of a myth buster than a traditional follow along grain to glass video. All right, let's talk about the hops. Come over, give me a kiss. Frank Zappa hop. It is a Neo Mexicanus hop and I have no idea what that means, but let us know in the comment section if you do. This hop is harvested in the wild from New Mexico. Frank Zappa is one of my idols. I put him up there with Trey Parker, Joe Strummer, and of course, Doc Ellis. Frank Zappa passed away in 1993, but that didn't stop Lagunitas Brew Co. from naming beers after him, which unfortunately got discontinued around 2009. This hop weighs in at a mild 7% alpha acid, so I figured it'd be a good idea to use for a Mexican lager style. Frank Zappa didn't drink beer, and he wrote a ton of songs about being anti-drugs and alcohol, which is ironic, because he's probably the only person on planet Earth to have his own beer and hop named after him. I'd bet on it. But all good, Frank. Rest easy, Braj. Thank you for all the inspiration. I'll drink twice as much beer from here on out to compensate for Frank's lack of MBCing. All right, back to the brew day. All right, so we're gonna add four gallons of distilled water to our strike. 
I just do four gallons for five gallon batches pretty much every single time these days. Works out pretty well. Let's bring our infamous Anvil Foundry up to 160, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This is America. Gonna use our Anvil bucket today actually as a grain bucket since we're gonna be fermenting in corny kegs. If you want a full video on fermenting in corny kegs, fermenting under pressure, transferring with no oxygen, I'll put a card right here. You hear that little magic chime? That means you know it's special. 160 degrees strike water combined with nine pounds of room temperature grain will bring us to a 152 degree mash. And I'm just gonna recirculate it manually. I don't really use pumps anymore. It's just one too many hassles and I just went back to old faithful gravity. We're gonna heat up sparge water to 170 on our anvil burner and anvil kettle. And when it's ready, I just bring it to boil. I only mash in for probably about 15 minutes, but when I'm sparging, it's about 45 minutes. 45 minutes to maybe maybe an hour sometimes. All right, so it's a little bit late in the day and I'm gonna plot twist this whole video. I can't do two five gallon batches back to back. It's just, I'm not gonna have time for it. The sun's gonna go down. I'm kind of wiped out. It's hot, it's like 85 degrees. I'm not trying to scam anybody here. So instead of doing two five gallon batches, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one eight gallon batch and then cut them up into two four gallon batches. So I added three more gallons of distilled water to my anvil and I'm gonna hit it with a pints of Pilsner dry malt extract to compensate for the sugar. But I will leave the recipe for the original five gallon batch in the link in the description. Scalps honor. Two ounces of Zappa hops at flame out. Everything's going as planned. Great brew day so far. It's hot. This is like the third t-shirt I've had to wear today. Third sweatband, maybe second hat. It's going good though, I cleaned all the kegs, cleaned the beer lines, so everything should be tasting good. Should be. Got two yeast packets, we're gonna pitch each one into each one of the corny kegs. Then I'm gonna throw a spunding valve on one so everything is the exact same, except one is under pressure and one has this blow off tube that's going into a jar of star sand mixture right now. All right, long day, check it out. Now we just pray to the beer gods. The next day. For 65 degrees. Let's check it out. Yeah! Not under pressure. Look at that, baby. Oh, I like that. Yeah, baby. Let's check it out. Under pressure over here. Here, let's get my, uh, this brush. There we go. Something like that. What are we at? Getting some light. We're about 10, 12 PSI. I'm gonna let a little air out. Spread it out, there we go. We're cooking with grease, baby. Let's keep it around 10. So far, whoa! So good, baby. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so, so far, we do not need to ferment under pressure to get the yeast to be happy. All right, so, so far we know that 
we do not need to transfer under pressure for the yeast to be active. But then again, we have not tasted it yet. So, so far this video is going as planned. That's it for now, top of the morning. It's about 6 a.m. This is the earliest I've ever been up. All right, gonna ferment for one week. So that means serious downtime. With serious downtime gives you more than enough time to watch every Homebrew for Life video. Dill pickle goza? Yeah, we got that. Kettle sour videos? Check. Cook a turkey in a trash can? Yup. Beer battered chili rellanos? Look no further. Cream sickle milkshake IPA? Yeah, we even got that too. And if you aren't subscribed to the Hoppy Hour, that's another channel where we do a live stream every Wednesday, then I'll get you. The same way Paul Bunyan got that blue ox. All right, it's been one week later. Looks like fermentation is complete. I got gravities from both. They both finished out at 10.06, and I forgot to film the original gravity, but it was just under 10.40, about 10.38, which leaves us with a 4.2 beer, 4.2% alcohol by volume. Pretty stoked with that. Glad the uh, extract worked out came in, saved me five hours of my life. The beer that was under pressure looks much cleaner than the beer that wasn't. I'm gonna hit each keg with half an ounce of Biofine. We're gonna purge it. We're gonna transfer over and we're gonna force carbonate it because I got the barrages coming over tonight. And if you wanna watch a video on forced carbonation, the video that started this channel, click on another card up there. It's another magic chat, man. Feels good. But right now, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. You stoked? I'm stoked. Just I'm stoked. so stoked. Stoked where the beer is at. And if you guys want to hear a secret, there was this one. Okay, now Justina can tell us which one was on the left. Got it. Under pressure, that one. This one? Under pressure, that one. This Under one? pressure, that one. That one. Under he, pressure. He's talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready when you are. Okay. All right. Start off with. I'll start off with this hand this time. Go now? Well, hang on. Yeah. Pull the Mori. There's like four out. Plenty of the other. Under pressure. Pull this man! No! Alright, here you go. Put your hands out. Hands Put it on the table. Okay, Come I on. got one. I got two. I feel a dog. Yep. Uh, final answer. Alright, so here we go. Drinking out of left hand to start. I think I know what that is. Okay, this tastes a little bit bready to me, kind of like almost graham cracker overload. They're good, man. Got hints of a prenuptial agreement. They do taste a little bit different, but not by much. I think this one has got a little bit more flavor and I think that's because it was under pressure and the hop aroma did not get released. And I'm going with this for spunding valve. 